Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is April 25th, 2000 in, 2018, Wednesday evening. Taking a look at our solar conditions right now, our solar wind speed is down to 334.4 kilometers per second with a density of 4.1. Let's go ahead and check out our sunspot today, AR2706. It is directly earth facing. It has a stable magnetic field that poses no threat for strong solar flares. Sunspot number 19. And taking a look at our KP indices, we finally go up in one value as it was a zero earlier today. The 24 hour max was a two. Taking a look at the SDO, and this is the coronal hole that they are pointing out here that they believe that we will feel just a slight graze on our magnetic field from this uh, coronal hole that's uh, going to be earth facing. Uh, we should feel the effects of that tomorrow, if any at all. It is not forecasted for any kind of uh, geomagnetic storms or what or anything like that. So, But we will break through with any uh, updates if there is any to report. Take a look at the TSI numbers. Right now, we actually are reporting a decent little drop here. Um, we are down to 1360.60. Uh, yesterday, this was as of the 17th, and yesterday I reported it was at a 1360.664. So um, quite a bit of a drop, not really, but significant uh, for one day reading as well for TSI. So it is slow as a snail, but there is a decline. Taking a look at some headlines, and I found this one to be very um, intriguing. There have been Fewer tornadoes than average so far in 2018. Zero in Kansas right now, and zero in Oklahoma so far for the year. Now, it says here, fewer tornadoes than average have occurred so far in 2018, and in portions of the plains, that would typically expect a least, at least a few tornadoes by now. Have not seen any of these dangerous twisters thanks to unfavorable upper-level jet stream patterns. In fact, this may lead to a new tornado record for Oklahoma. Through April 24th, NOAA uh, Center estimated 227 tornadoes have been reported this year in the U.S. This is well below the 10-year average of 426 tornadoes from 2005 to 2015. Now, I wanted to point something out, too. Um, I was going through YouTube, and there's a channel called Mr. MB333. And I've noticed lately, and this comes up in my news feed because it's, he's been talking about solar minimums. And I've noticed he's had three or four videos. Today he was talking about the correlation of a major F5 tornado that made uh, landfall or touched down uh, also during a, a, an outbreak of tornadoes. And he pointed out to the one that happened 11 years ago, 2007, uh, 96 in uh, 85 and then of course in 1974 all each year the one thing they had in common was e5 tornadoes and i'm just glad to see more channels are starting to put these things together so now what's interesting about this fact is that we already know this next solar cycle is predicted to be an unknown if at all so could this be the first indication that something's off about this cycle or are we just going to see a later tornado outbreak and here on the weather channel uh they were talking about what we're looking at for april this is the risk map right here and as you see oklahoma arkansas mississippi alabama the northern parts of these states um, that's where we normally see the greatest risk for tornadoes but we really uh we've seen some tornadoes in arkansas and mississippi and alabama so far uh, but nothing, as you saw the numbers, were well below our average thus far. And I think we get also a little graph here that talks about um, May. I thought they had a map here for May. I apologize, folks. But I think because of this late start, uh, they're also saying one reason for the lack of tornadoes and severe weather this year has been a persistent upper level pattern in place. This pattern has brought a southward dip into the jet stream to much of the central U.S., which has allowed colder than average conditions to dominate these regions. That makes complete sense to me. Um, 
we've seen colder temperatures much colder than average across the central and northern plains of the United States uh, I can't tell you how many times we've seen the freeze line go into Tennessee as late as early April if not later so uh, check out the links in the description if you'd like to check out more about this and lifeless ambe heavy ash fall um, permanent relocation of an entire island guys says here the volcanic alert a level of ambe volcano remains at three the volcano eru the volcanic eruption at lake vau continues uh, they're reporting this that this was as of uh, april 23rd the volcanic activity is likely to continue at similar levels consistent with volcanic alert level three adding that the activity may also show changes with periods of stronger or weaker activity from time to time the danger zone for life safety is limited to three kilometers which is 1.8 miles radius from the active vent and areas located in the yellow zone observation conducted on april 21st confirmed the eruptions in april have changed the volcanic cone in lake vow and that the cone is now larger in addition a large crater has formed and a small lake is present in the active crater <clears throat> and we'll take a look at the maps here once again a wonderful job by the watchers uh, reporting on the earthquakes and the volcanoes have a little history here in september 2017 forced the urgent but temporary evacuation of the entire island all of its 11,000 inhabitants however the danger of explosion eruption subsided after a few weeks and most of the people returned by december so to check out more check out the link in the description at watchers Let's check out some news here for california droughts to deluge are a sign of weather whiplash to come that's the truth there when california was in the midst of its wettest winter in 100 years in february of last year 20 inches of rain fell in Sierra Nevada in just over three days, sending a record flow of water into lake held back by the tallest dam in the United States. Completed in 1968, the, the aging Orville Dam was suddenly holding back a reservoir at 151% of its capacity, forcing operators to relieve the pressure via a spillway. But they soon noticed unusual flow patterns, and when they stopped the outflow, they saw that the concrete had buckled and a gaping widening crater had formed in the middle of the spillway. Now, we all remember this um but this was you know last february was one of the wettest in the last hundred years which you know again makes sense with the science here with what we're heading into the water level eventually fell without breaching the dam and engineers shut down the spillway to investigate the damage but the whole ordeal was jarring for california which had just been parched by a record drought that left lakes dry and lawns yellow and restaurants not allowed to serve water unless it was specifically required so go ahead and check this article out here um, this website seems to have uh, some facts here about what is going on but they talk about <clears throat> that the long term for california is we can expect these whiplash where we get the extreme heat to the sudden cool to uh back to the heat and then of course the these downpours that we had last year that were not seasonable at all those are also uh expected to continue to last through the next uh, decades to come uk weather latest britain set for thunder and snow as temperatures slump following the warm spell and i don't mean to be debbie downer here but snow could return to the uk as temperatures continue to slump following a record-breaking warm spell last week. Met office forecasters are warning Britons to expect showers through the week into the weekend, with temperatures in the south plummeting as low as 6 degrees Celsius on Monday. It says here today, Wednesday will be one of those days where it's sunny one minute, and then there will be a heavy downpour the next, with possibly some thunder and hail. There may even be some snow cover in the mountains of Scotland. So there's your snow forecast there. But I know we have a lot of friends that are overseas in the UK and they were bragging about how blistering hot it was. And now they're talking about possibility of much colder air and snow. Sorry about that, guys. State of emergency floods in Alberta are said to uh, get even worse. A local state of emergency has been declared in southern Alberta after the worst flooding in the region has seen in over 20 years homes and major roads are now completely engulfed in water dozens of people have been evacuated from their homes and up to 560 kilometers of major roads have been shut down 
Officials expect it to get even worse in the coming days. Typical flood season in Alberta hasn't even begun. And nothing uh, could have prepared the province for the severity of this flooding. It has caught the entire pr province off guard. The state of emergency is in effect. It, it lists the counties here. Lethbridge, Lamont County, uh, Silksikia Nation, among other areas. Uh, let's see, they're hit with some of the worst flooding. Now a full crisis mode in the uh, Siksilkia region. I think that's Siksilkia. I'm still probably butchering that, but I'm trying, guys. It's somewhere in Canada near Alberta. You don't Alberta. have to worry about it. <laughs> People send their corrections in the comments all the time for you. Oh, that's great. We love you. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And they're nice about it. Well, they're I, nice about we it. both said <clears throat> Leicestershire wrong. Or it's, it's I saw that. I saw sure, that. Sure. Leicestershire. Sorry to interrupt. Is it my drink you're drinking? No, that's mine. Mine? No, that's mine. The GPS mine. Anyway, <laughs> sorry about that, folks. Good Lord. So here we go. That might be mine. I don't know. Yeah, Could you be. stole my drink, D. Sorry about that. Well, my iced tea. <laughs> back to the floods in Alberta. Here's some of the pictures. That is mine. That's yours. Uh, this is peach. I don't like peach. Here, take that lid off for me. The joys of live. That peach tastes gross. All right, so <laughs> as you know, we were talking about some flooding here. I apologize for the interruption there. We got our drinks mixed up. Residents have been asked to avoid traveling in areas with high water levels, but that's not stopping people from busting out their kayaks and treating the floods like a day at the lake. It was pretty fun, you know, a eh? nice relaxing day on the lake. One Alberta resident said, lots of people stopping and taking pictures, laughing and asking me how the fishing was. At least the warm spring weather is making this serious situation a little more bearable for some. Yeah, floods no fun. Uh, I just when I see pictures like this, I don't know how that's even bearable. So um, apparently this person's in dry land right now. All right, this is probably one of the. Um, this is a bigger headline than what it really is, and of course you're not going to see it in mainstream media because. Uh, this is something they don't want you to know for sure, but I'm, I'm very excited to see this. We already know Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State, is a huge anti-global warming opponent. He, he does not agree with man-made war global warming. Uh, and now we have EPA Chief Scott Pruitt moves to end the reliance on secret science. You guys are going to like this. EPA. Administrator Scott Pruitt proposed a new rule Tuesday aimed at bolstering the role of science in developing regulations. Pruitt announced the change at an event at the Environmental Protection Agency's headquarters that was closed to the Daily Signal and other press. It could, however, be viewed online. The era of secret science at the EPA is coming to an end, Pruitt said. The ability to test, authenticate, reproduce scientific findings is vital for the integrity of the rulemaking process. Americans deserve to assess the legitimacy, the <laughs> legitimacy of science underpinning, underpinning EPA decisions that may impact their lives. The EPA called the proposal to ensure that scientists standing behind the agency's action is made public so that it can be independently verified, officials said. The liberal left continue to push their radical agenda against American values. Uh, oh, that's another... Sorry, that's a headline. I apologize. It's true, though. Pruitt's decision to make the rule will prevent agencies. I felt like Ron Burgundy right there. Just read anything on the teleprompter. <laughs> I'm Jake Riley. Is it Monday? It feels like it. <laughs> Pruitt's decision to make the rule will prevent agency officials from using undisclosed scientific data as the foundation for regulations that cost affected individuals and businesses tens of billions of dollars. So what they're saying here, folks, is, well, let me, let me keep going here. Going forward, Pruitt said EPA regulators will be permitted to use only scientific studies with data available for public consumption. Pruitt's proposed rule calls at EPA-funded studies to make all data public. Lamar Smith, Republican of Texas, is among the EPA critics who have filtered the agency's Reliance on data derived from secret science. 
basically to get regulations approved. Smith and other congressional critics point out, for instance, that over the past two decades, the EPA air quality regulations have been based on science produced in a taxpayer-funded study from Harvard and Brigham Young University researchers that the agency kept sealed from the public scrutiny. This study is widely known as the Six City Studies. 1994 EPA Science Advisory Board, known as the Clean Air Scientific Scientific Advisory Committee requested the study data, but the agency denied the request in 97. Congress also asked, but the EPA again denied the request. The following year, Congress passed legislation calling for the EPA scientific data to be made public, but an appellate court ruled that the law was not enforceable. In 2000, now they're blocking the truth, guys. That's what the that's what our justice system was doing. In 2013, House members issued subpoena to compel the APA to produce the data, which the agency successfully resisted. The House also passed several bills to ban practice of secret science, but the measures never made it out of the Senate. The latest version is known as the Honest Act. Smith, who is a chairman on the White or the House Science Space Technology Committee and a lead sponsor of that bill, attended and spoke at the EPA event. The Texas Republican described Pruitt as courageous, head of EPA, during his remarks and credited the administrator for moving forward with the proposed rule change. Surely we can all agree on two things, Smith said. First, we need clean air and water. And second, EPA regulations should be supported by legitimate and publicly available scientific data. Administrator Pruitt's announcement ensures that data will be uh, secret no more. For too long, the EPA has issued rules and regulations based on data that has been withheld from American people. Today, Administrator Pruitt rightfully is changing business as usual and putting a stop to a hidden agenda. The audience of about 30 uh, included policy analysts, Washington Bay's, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they're basically saying here the EPA is now putting a new place in steps, scientific method. Part of this is being able to reproduce the analysis that provides counsel to regulation decisions. Uh, This means we will be doing better science. And there was something here they really put out here that just caught my mind. But they're basically Xing out no more junk science. So had this rule been in place back when Al Gore had started up with all this global warming talk and the junk science that went into that. I don't know if we'd be sitting here right now. I I doubt it. We probably still would be. I was on um, Noah website tonight before I came on the air and articles from their archives are claiming that global warming is man-made and that here's what to do during man-made global warming. And it just made me sick to see article after article on Noah's website. You know, this is a website that we're supposed to trust the information from. And yet, I I find it very deceitful. I find it very contradicting to the information that we already know, the the data that we already follow, that we can prove what's going on, is not lining up with what things that the NOAA is saying. And I'm just glad to see that this administration has got two big dogs in his cabinet right now that are not going to tolerate any more of the junk science and the political bullcrap that goes on here when it comes to climate change and all these tax proposals. You know, I saw yesterday Michael Bloomberg, former New York mayor, uh, issued a check for $4.5 million to the Paris Treaty Accord Act since Donald Trump pulled us out. And somebody on um, Twitter pointed out, man, that you know, how many homeless people could that have fed? How many, how many people could have gotten medical attention with that money? How many people could have been sleeping in a warm shelter that night because of that money? Instead, he donates, he blows $4.5 million to failed science and lies. And basically just another way to help hold up that dream that we're, you know, we're killing ourselves is what Noah and other scientists that are pushing this global warming agenda That's what they're telling us. We're killing ourselves. If we don't stop what we're doing now, then, you know, it's going to be too late. And I I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there's nothing we can do to start or stop global cooling or warming. We said this many times. It's all natural. It's all cyclical. I'm done with the rant. 
little bit of sad news here. Two teens die in flash flood storm as hits Israel, West Bank, as if they don't have enough problems out there. Two teenagers died in flash floods on Wednesday as Israel endured heavy rains and hail on Wednesday. Towns in the northern area were hit hard by rains. Demona and Arad saw heavy flooding and all nearby streams were overflowed. A 16-year-old died after being swept away in a flood. And then I think it says here a little bit further down, a 17-year-old uh, Palestinian girl also died. She was swept away by the floods as she was herding away the sheep. So um, just really, not really something I, I want to glorify, but just another headline to show you the effects of the upcoming solar minimum and the flooding, the, the rain bombs, the amount of moisture that is falling from the sky that doesn't normally fall. And I was looking at, while I was on NOAA, I was looking at old, older articles about snowstorms there and what they were talking about is record breaking. And it's funny to me now looking back that 77 inches just maybe seven years ago was considered a very historic amount of snow to fall in one particular east uh, coast state. And this year, in that same state that 77 inches had fallen in 2010, Pennsylvania, Philly to be exact, this year we have Erie, PA, slaughters that historic number of 77 inches with over, um, what, two, did they reach 200 inches of snow in Erie? I know they were an inch and a half away last week. I'm assuming they did, but I haven't confirmed. We haven't confirmed. I haven't seen the headline, so they might have just missed it by a dusting. But I could probably look that up real quick. Again, these storms are going to continue to get worse. They're going to continue to get bigger, and they're going to continue to drop more and more rains to areas that aren't used to heavy downpours like this. And, and then you've got places like uh, Afghanistan, where the drought is still affecting over a million people. Afghanistan faces a threat of serious drought this year after recording the lowest snowfall and rain in over this this year, actually. And they said at least 22 of 34 provinces are already suffering badly, almost 70 percent. In a statement released by UN International Crisis Children's Emergency Fund, the extremely dry winter has affected 22 provinces across Afghanistan and now threatens negatively impact lives of one million people. Uh, with an additional 2 million who could feel the effects over the coming months. Um, according to the statement, 23 to 30% of water sources have gone dry. Food insecurity and reduced access to safe water are, being, are beginning to take their toll in the 10 worst affected provinces. Uh, again, not the kind of news we like to report, but this is something that we'll see more and more of as the Grand Solar Minimum progresses through. Um, I have my handy dandy producer over here. I'm handy dandy. All she right. is looking it up to see if we broke that record before. Uh, here's a weird link, and I and I gotta say something, guys. Uh, Anthony Watts does good work over at this channel, but I, I um, yeah, they didn't get it, did they? I uh, just wanted to say with that snow record, the final inch of snow, the record snow is a no go by a half eerie. inch. If they got an yeah. inch, they missed it by a half inch, which keeps Buffalo. They, they wound up getting. 199.4 inches. So they missed it by six tenths of an inch. So Buffalo. Actually, that was the what they had to break. They wound up being 0.9 inches oh. away from it. All right. Well, thank you That's for fact finding that for me. Reported as of today. And I found this article uh, to be a little um, concerning because this is based off of. The reason why we're using LED is because we're saving energy. And we were once told a long time ago that we were man-made global warming and reducing our planet's emissions and energy level was going to be key. Well, now researchers are now saying that there is a possibility that LED lights are being linked to prostate and breast cancer. Now, the results obtained for both cities show participants exposed to higher levels of blue light had a one and a half to two fold higher risk of developing breast and prostate cancer, respectively, as compared to the less exposed population. Now, what really infuriates me, and by the way, the link's going to be in the description. What really infuriates me, and this is just an example of how harmful this man made global warming nonsense has really been. Forget about the taxpayer money that we've had to spend on a false research and fake science, what they've promoted. Now, because of new technologies to help us from, you know, 
emitting more emissions from energy and everything else, we get these new technologies that aren't fully understood. And now they're, now they're saying that there could be a connection. So this is nothing in stone, but it's just interesting to me to see that, that not only is this global warming hoax affecting people as far as like preparing for what's to come, but it's now putting people in harm's way with this false uh, profit stuff of global warming. We can make a change and turn the you know, environment around and this and that. Look, I'm all for clean air and clean water. I'm not saying that being energy efficient is not good. I'm just saying I think some of these th like some of this technology that we have now was driven from the idea that we can save the planet from the climate by reducing this and reducing that. And not fully understanding what the long-term effects could be on some of this stuff. And here's more of a laugh of the day headline, folks. Bear with me on this. Climate change is enticing monkeys to have more promiscuous interspecies sex. Yeah. Um, from Florida Atlantic University and the now if only climate change could cure the I have a headache department comes this study. That in the end attributes change to behavior to climate change. It is nature's way to respond. Oddly, there seems to be some red team, blue team, two timing going on. That's right, folks. The claim out there is that these blue tailed monkeys and red tailed monkeys aren't supposed to be mating, but they are. And that's a problem. Do they have jungle fever? They have jungle fever, apparently, because. What's going on is the blue tails are mating with the red tails and the red tails are mating with the blue tails and the and blues with the blues and the reds with no, the reds. But listen, the hybrids are mating with the hybrids and the hybrids are also mating with the blue tails and the red tails. And it's, it's global warming. And it's fault. global warming's fault. It's your fault then. It's CO2's fault. Stop breathing. <sighs> I can't make this stuff up, folks. The link is in the description. I'm not really going to entertain this entire article but i just couldn't believe my eyes and you know if it wasn't on this website i wouldn't have thought it was real <laughs> wanted to show this real quick because something they say in here this is wrapping up from winter storm xantho an unusually late spring snowstorm pummeled the u.s midwest with snow green bay wisconsin experienced the largest april snowstorm on record with more than 20 inches of snow falling over april 13th through the 16th the National Weather Service called it a once-in-a-lifetime event. The storm closed roads and businesses for several days, caused sporadic power outages, and produced waves up to almost 5 meters at 16 feet high on Lake Michigan. Uh, once-in-a-lifetime, huh? That's a pretty bold statement. And we've seen tons of tons of records all month long being broken for cold and snow. Now, I personally think the snow is winding down. I have some friends who think we're going to get some snow this weekend. And if we do, I am going to come find him and throw a snowball at him. So anyway, wanted to show you guys the days suitable for field work. And this is great. I'm glad they're doing this. We always wonder, you know, how many days of the week can these farmers actually get out in the field and do something? And this breaks it down. This is for as of April 22nd. So this was last week going into Sunday. Um, areas like Ohio, you only have 1.4 days to work in your fields. Okay, so hurry up. Uh, but then you got places like Colorado, four and a half days, or even Kansas, 5.3 days. Those are manageable work weeks. 5.2 days in uh, in Missouri, Arkansas, you've got almost five full days. Oklahoma, five and a half days, but you're dealing with drought in Oklahoma, so. You know, you know, of, of course, it's suitable to work in the fields, unfortunately, just too dry. So we've got the main farming areas most for the most part. But the concern, and I've always been saying this, is Iowa and Nebraska and Illinois and Indiana and now Ohio. And as you guys look, and even New York, I mean, there's no farming going on in New England right now. You get one day a week to work in the field, guys. That's it. One in New York, one, one and a half day in Maine. Um, I mean, the, the, the trend here is that the areas that we've seen a lots of rain, even Kentucky, 3.6, Tennessee, four and a half days. I can tell you now that these farmers are already behind. And if you live in Iowa and you only get one and a half day of real work and your cornfield is <laughs> already behind one and a half days of suitable field work is not going to cut it. So these guys are now up against the clock, in my opinion. 
and this is the this to me would be the worry zone and maybe I'm wrong for this but as of now Ohio Indiana Illinois Iowa Nebraska um, parts of New York up in you know, New England I know we've got a lot of grape and apple orchards up here so um, we're not known for the we're not a corn belt up here or anything like that but still uh, limited time to work in the field in the Midwest and the Northern Plains and if you're living in North and South Dakota or Minnesota there's no time for farming right now. According to this map here, there ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, zero days in Minnesota and less than one day in North and South Car or South Dakota. So, I, I mean, this is, I, I don't mean to joke about it, but I, I just can't believe that we're almost into May and we're talking about zero days of work being able to be done in the fields due to the inclement weather, the wet, the saturation of the ground. So... Links in the description for that. Also, you can check that report out on our website, thegrandsolarminimum.com. I just wanted to show this off a little quick. This is a little bit of a grain report. This is an overseas type report. Um, talks about normalization rainfalls, key agriculture area where we replenish moisture in many fields. Talking about Argentina. The area planted wheat for 2018-19 season in Argentina would be up 5.9 hectares from 5.7. From the previous season, thanks to high cereal prices and a forecast climate improvement after months of severe drought, said uh, Buenos Aires Grain Exchange on Tuesday. However, however, if weather conditions are adverse during the grain planting window, of which Argentina is a major world exporter, the area sown would be only 5.4 million hectares. So you see the, re uh, the difference here. We're talking close to 300,000 difference here and as far as hectares uh, being able to be planted but still that's that's significant amount of land that would be affected if the weather continues to act up over there now they're happy to get the um, the moisture out there but I do know we, we've seen some pretty radical pictures of flooding out there as well so uh, link will be in the description also this website is linked to our resources page and while I'm talking about farming guys I this page is probably the best when it comes to the lower 48 here they have every state listed out cal everything that you need to know about farming and crops in these states are on this website agfacts.com um, i don't have a particular story from this website but as i was doing some research today i found this and uh this is very um very extensive coverage of every state and very detailed so if you want to keep up with what's going on with the fields across the country this year i recommend this website here agfax.com no newsletter right now um but yeah i noticed here too it's and you know adjusting management practices for a late start in ohio obviously they're only allowed to work in the fields for 1.4 days as prospects for a timely start to spring planting diminish Growers need to reassess their planting strategies and consider adjustments. Since delayed planting reduces the yield potential corn, the, and I have to hit continue to read, apologize folks, but um, again, just basic advice, uh, reporting on the conditions of the area. This is obviously the truth. We just showed you how many days they can actually work in the field. Now they're saying they're running out of time to get this spring's planting done on time, if at all. Link is in the description as well. And before we get to our weather, I just wanted to go over what AccuWeather is saying that we're going to have to deal with uh, for next week and the beginning of May because we're talking about severe weather in early May. Uh, we're also going to be talking about a warm-up as well. So uh, another stretch of warm, dry weather is eyeing the northeastern United States after rounds of rain to end the week this week. Yes, indeed. And I am looking forward to the dry weather here. The weather throughout the Northeast center, centered on the last weekend was by far the longest stretch of warmest and sunniest days since last fall. More dry, sunny, and warm conditions are in the cards in the not-too-distant future. So good news for us here up in the Northeast. It appears Old Man Winter has, and Old Man Winter and his snow have finally packed up and headed north, with most of the recent storm bringing all rain from Virginia, West Virginia, and Ohio to northern Maine. So there you go, folks. No snow in the forecast for this weekend, thankfully. I think everyone is done with that, at least on the Northeast. Uh, this time, only MLB games in the Northeast are at risk for postponements. Uh, Boston between Tampa Bay and the Red Sox. 
that one will be at uh, in the way of possibly being canceled. And if that one does get canceled, it will uh, more than break the record for the month as we will have 27 uh, games for April that were canceled because of weather. And also to let you know, 26 is the record, but technically there was a uh, Major League Baseball player who had died that year. So they canceled the game because of that. It was still canceled, but technically weather-related, Major League Baseball saw 25 that year, not 26. But they will definitely break the record as far as the most um, postponements this early in the season. So the return of dry weather should bring smile to baseball and outdoor sports fans widespread. Temperatures reaching well into the 60s, 70s, and the 80s. Nice. Risk of frost, frosty mornings to continue, though. Despite the lure of more warmth on the way, gardeners should be very wary of the risk of more frost this month. Even as temperatures in the region are likely to continue to climb the staircase out of the basement over the next few weeks, people should use caution in terms of planting warm season vegetables and annual flowers and gardens just yet. So the link is in the description. We are forecasting here for late frost, folks. Look at this. Average date. And it does show that here in the Northeast, we will see it later than May 15th. So it's not unusual to see these late season frosts. But uh, they didn't happen as much. I know they started happening last year a little bit more than usual. And this year, of course, we've seen some late frost so far. But link is in the description. Just wanted to kind of show you what we're kind of expecting here in the Northeast. And now to look at our tropical tidbits forecast. We do see lots of moisture in Northeast right now. Uh, Texas, you have some scattered showers throughout the state in the southern parts and the eastern part of the state. Oklahoma, unfortunately, not enough rain for you guys. Uh, Missouri and Arkansas getting the majority of the showers right now. And as we move into the later part of this week, that storm system will go across the south. End of the weekend, it goes up the coast into the northeast. Another brief chance of showers again for the northeast after the round that they're going through right now. Looking back to the west, of course, the northwest, you'll get some more moisture coming in off the coast. That hangs around from the majority of the weekend all the way through to Monday. And there is that snow chance. The GFS models are showing a slight chance of snow on Sunday. Again, I will throw something from here and hit you with it if we get this snow. So I've been telling him all week we're not getting it. But the GFS is showing snow in western New York, so we shall see, folks. Also, April 29th, we're going to see snow and, and moderate snow as well in Idaho. But other than that, nothing too serious on the storm front. Uh, just some really annoying cold weather into the northwestern part of the country as the beginning of May starts off with warmer weather for the east and the northeast. But with that comes more shower activity. And this is where we are concerned about severe weather. So... Right here you see on Thursday next week, we're looking at parts of Missouri and Arkansas and Illinois, possibly where this tor this severe weather could flare up. Now it looks like it actually gets started in northern Texas into Oklahoma. So we could see the first big uh, spit ups of storms starting in Oklahoma, plow through the southeast throughout the week. The severe threat looks like it just stays in place for a couple of days before the moisture really just kind of hovers over the same region and finally moves off by early the following week. So warmer weather to come, more rain, and believe it or not, more snow. If this GFS forecast holds up, folks, GFS is forecasting snow in the higher elevations of Nevada, parts of Utah, Idaho, Montana, Washington, and Oregon. So we will stay tuned as the snow machine, at least the significant accumulations, are going to stay away. But apparently we're still talking to chances of snow showers all the way through uh, late next week into early of uh, May 10th. Since we have residents that live in the um, Hawaii areas and Alaska areas, I wanted to go ahead and bring up uh, thank you Mari for bringing this radar up for us tonight um, I did mess it up like always <laughs> you know, it's windy do you want me to help you do no this is the remix <laughs> so 
I hate you, Wendy. So there's a big storm out in the Pacific that's right above Hawaii. You know, it looks like it's going to get clipped by the bottom of this. So it looks like the worst of this storm, thankfully, is going to form right out in front of Hawaii. But it is. it looks like it's, it could drag some moisture with it. So not all the islands are out of the woods yet as into the weekend. We see some heavy precipitations just off to the mainland. But it looks like this storm system does drag some moisture over the islands as we get into the early part of next week and into May 1st. So there's your look there. Go ahead and take us to Alaska now. See if we've got any snow chances up there. I, I see a lot of people talk about how Alaska gets warmer. And um, at this time right now, we can actually report that there is some snowfall. You mind clicking on the temperature for us so we can take a look at what we got for temperatures? There you go. All right, so definitely below freezing and definitely supports the the frozen precipitation that Wendy is forecasting. So no spring yet for you guys out here, but it's getting there. So other than that, Mari, well, How have you been tonight? It, it's been interesting. And is there a cookie on your lap, Jake? That was for later. <laughs> so, anyway, guys. Well, we had Starman and Rob and everyone entertaining Carol. I do want to give a shout out. I, I'm not sure if we have met this person in the chat before. Uh, a lovely woman named Nina donated to us. Very generous. Thank you, Nina. Shout out to you, Rob. If I get snow, I'm going to cry, so make it go away. That's all I have to say about that. And I won't even tell you what they were talking about with that monkey article, Jake. I, you know, I'm not even going to go there. I, uh, I know that we have an ornery group. That's why I thought we could handle it, so let's keep it that way. I, I have faith in you guys. But, uh, no, I just thought that was ridiculous. And, you know, global warming is being blamed for everything, so why not blame monkeys having interspecies sex on climate change? Yep. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight, <laughs> folks. On that note, on, on that note, we hope you all like and share. Please subscribe to us, and we will talk soon.